Now available in paperback and Kindle Unlimited, John Haynes, A Conversation with Death. The man who rules the world and the angel of darkness take on a horde of demons in this inaugural John Haynes series adventure. Get John Haynes, A Conversation with Death for 99 cents on Kindle or in paperback today. I just got through watching Netflix's Luke Cage Season 2 at the library yesterday, and I have to say I am floored by how great this series was. Netflix's Luke Cage Season 2 elevates not only Luke Cage to another level, it elevates the Marvel Cinematic Universe to another level. And when I was watching the last two episodes of Netflix's Luke Cage Season 2, it really reminded me of The Dark Knight. Now, The Dark Knight was considered the gold standard as related to superhero films, and Netflix's Luke Cage Season 2 is right up there with The Dark Knight in terms of quality. In fact, I have to call this the Marvel Cinematic Universe's version of The Dark Knight, because when we take a look at Netflix's Luke Cage Season 2, it elevates everything in terms of quality as related to story, as related to directing, as related to cinematography, as related to acting, and this series is a masterpiece when you look at all 13 episodes together. Because when you look at all 13 episodes together, it's like watching a, every chapter of a great American novel. And that's how great this series is, and that's how much the material is elevated to another level. And I, what I really liked about Netflix's Luke Cage Season 2 was all the layers as related to the storytelling, all the richness as related to the characters, and what I really enjoyed was seeing that they pulled no punches in their commentary on the black community. And when you take a look at the commentary made in Netflix's Luke Cage Season 2, they really hit hard, especially as it relates to making a commentary on the dysfunction of the American black woman. When you take a look at your Mariah and her daughter Matilda, they really make a powerful commentary as to the dysfunction of the black woman, her issues as related to self-hatred, her issues as related to matriarchy, and how her matriarchal power usually leads to the destruction of everything around her. Every episode from episode 9 on really hit hard in making that commentary on the black matriarchy. And that was something that you don't see in many traditional shows, because many traditional shows often take a gynocentric slant on media related as related to the black woman. They oftentimes portray the black woman as a victim, but in Netflix's Luke K Season 2, we get to see the black female as a villain, and we get to see the impact of the black woman on the black community and how her decisions have an impact on all those, not only in the United States, but abroad as we look at Bushmaster. And as I was watching those last couple of episodes of Netflix's Luke Cage Season 2, they reminded me of something I watched in a series of YouTube videos by a former YouTuber known as Real Man Allen. And now this YouTuber, Real Man Allen 73, he made this series of videos called Grandma's Lies, Generational Curse. And in that series of videos, he talked about how the culture of the matriarchy, the grandmother, was a single mother, how the mother was learned how to be a single mother from her mother, and how the daughter learned how to be a single mother from her mother. And those videos, when they were on YouTube, were extremely powerful. And I looked at their Netflix's Luke Cage Season 2, and I saw the Grandma's Lies and Generational Curse right there in front of me with Mama Maybell, your Mariah Stokes, and your Tilda Johnson. All three of them are a representation of Grandma's Lies and, gen and the Generational Curse of the Self-Hatred and the self-destructive behavior of the black woman. And that was something I really enjoyed watching in Netflix's Luke Cage Season 2, was seeing that these producers had the courage and the backbone to really dig deep into the dysfunctional behavior 
and the dysfunctional thinking of the black woman and present that as part of the overall season story arc and take us inside the head of the black woman and get us to understand where her dysfunction comes from, where her self-hatred comes from, and how her behavior leads to the destruction of all those around her. And I saw that destruction coming in the last two episodes when your Mariah Stokes decided that since she couldn't have the black community, she was going to destroy the black community all around her and destroy the lives of all the people around her. I mean, all those people who were working in Harlem's Paradise, she was willing to have them killed because she couldn't have the life that she wanted to have. And she was willing to sacrifice all those people all because things didn't go her way. And that's what's really scary about this black female is that we saw, we see this every day in the black community, but no one has the backbone or the stones until this season two of Luke Cage to even talk about this. Many black men on YouTube talk about this dysfunction as related to the black woman on the regular, but we don't see that presented in any media outside of this Luke Cage. And I, I really takes a lot of courage to come out here and make that statement in Luke Cage regarding the black female's dysfunction. And it also takes more character to say that this black female sold out the black community because in other episodes later on in the series we see how the Mariah character was literally willing to sell drugs in her community and she was literally willing to try to make deals with people outside the community like the Asians, like the Hispanics, and like other people, white people, Italians, in order to be able to get what she wanted at the expense of the community. So there was a very powerful commentary about the black woman in Luke Cage's second season, and I really applaud the producers for going out of their way to make that commentary in between the lines of their story because they take again it takes a lot of courage to do that in this gynocentric media where in where everybody's always trying to look for ways to praise and elevate the black woman or make her out to be some sort of victim but in this series they managed to go out here and make one of the most powerful commentaries about this black female and how she and her matriarchal order have literally destroyed the black community and they also made a great commentary about Luke Cage being the black man and the sheriff of Harlem. Now with the whole sheriff of Harlem thing I understand where they're going with that and what they want to do with the whole sheriff of Harlem angle is saying that Luke Cage has to be the black man who takes charge of the black community and he has to be the leader of the black community because no one else will take the lead in the black community many of the beta males in the community they are not equipped to take that position of power and as him being someone who understands the power he has to take that charge and that's why he becomes the power man at the end of the season I could see the metaphor there and it's very thought-provoking how he becomes the power man in the community now, your Mariah had set him up there in an effort to destroy him, and I saw that as sort of like a chess move, as a way to try to give him this power, but I believe that the Luke Cage character in Season 3 is going to under start to understand the responsibility of his power. And when I take a look at Luke Cage at the end of Season 2, it really reminds me of what happened with John Haynes at the end of The Temptation of John Haynes. Now, when I wrote The Temptation of John Haynes back in 2005, I had written it where the Lucifer character had made him the CEO of Morris Phillips in the hopes of helping getting him to compromise his values and eventually get seduced by the Easteen character, who was a she-demon. And when I look at your Luke Cage, I can see the parallels between John Haynes and Luke Cage in that both men are being tempted by that power, but I believe what ha will happen to Luke Cage is the same thing that happened to John Haynes, in that it's his values and his character that will help him overcome these temptations that are going to be placed in front of him 
for Luke Cage Season 3. And I believe that's going to be the core theme of Luke Cage Season 3, is that you have this power man, and that this power man has to really think about whether he's going to be the protector of the black community and deal with that whole god and monster thing. Now, when it comes down to the power man, is he? people are going to have to wonder, is he going to be a god or is he going to be a monster? And that's something that they really did a great job of setting up in Season 2 of Luke Cage struggling with the whole idea of being this god to people in the black community and the fear that he could turn into a monster. Now, Mariah believes that she can turn him into a monster, and even in her death, she believed that she would go in and try to turn Luke Cage in a mon into a monster in the same way that Lucifer thought he could compromise John Haynes by giving him this power. But as I saw when I got inspired to write the story of The Temptation of John Haynes, I saw the poster that said, if you really want to test a person's character, you give them power. And I believe that season three is going to be the test of Luke Cage's character because as he is the power man, he has to see where he really stands in terms of power. And I really see a lot of really interesting storylines involving this Tilda Johnson Nightshade, and I see some stuff res related to Shades. I don't think Shades is gone for season three, and I think he's going to be a major player with the new principal villain if, that, if things are going the way I believe they're going to go. Because I believe that Luke Cage's big challenge will be the Puerto Ricans in Spanish Harlem. And that's the direction I believe that the series should go in because as it relates to Harlem, Luke Cage now controls Harlem and Spanish Harlem would be the next direction to go in. As someone who has worked in East Harlem on the east side, I can see where this series really needs to go, and I see the villain that they really need to push. Now, the villain for season three definitely needs to be Senor Suerte or Mr. Death, and as Mr. Death, he is the guy who controls Spanish Harlem, and he wants to make sure that Luke Cage does not come into Spanish Harlem, and that should be the core conflict for season three, because when I took a look at season two with Bushmaster and them taking 13 episodes to develop him, that was the great direction for that character. And they did an amazing job in not only developing Bushmaster, that he became not only a great villain, but he became one of the greatest villain in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, surpassing Thanos, surpassing Ultron, surpassing Baron Zemo. When you take a look at the best villain overall, it is Bushmaster, and it's Bushmaster because they did an amazing job crafting the story around Bushmaster, Jamaican culture in Jamaica, and Jamaican culture here in New York City, and giving us a rich picture of that culture and how that culture shaped him, shaped his motivations, and shaped his reasons for going out here to seek his revenge on the Stokes family for destroying everything that his family had and it also showed us Luke Cage's motivation for going out here to protect the people of Harlem from the violence of the Stokes family and the violence from Bushmaster. They did a great job of doing that and I believe in Luke Cage season 3 they could also do a great job of doing that with your senior Suerte and his um, efforts to try to move his territory further from Spanish Harlem into Black Harlem and really show us how there is no real black-brown coalition in the black community. Because that's another thing I would love to see explored in a Luke Cage season three if they go with Senor Suerte is going out here and showing the difference between the Latino community and the black community in Harlem. Showing now the Latino community in Harlem is completely different than the black community in Harlem because I've experienced that as someone who has, was working at Strive back in the year 2000 and I worked in East Harlem and I saw a complete difference in culture between Spanish Harlem on the east side and a complete difference between the black culture of the west side. And I really would love to see that the writers of Luke Cage 
take an opportunity to elevate Spanish Harlem and show us what's great about Spanish Harlem because they have the story material there with Shades now being a freelance agent to use him as a transition character to go into Spanish Harlem with Senor Suerte and him going to go work for Senor Suerte now that Mariah is dead and that would be a great way to segue into the whole season three where we're seeing Black Harlem versus Spanish Harlem and you could also bring in the Power Man and Iron Fist Latino hero El Aguilia into this series in a way organically or you could bring in the White Tiger so I see a lot of great opportunities for developing Luke Cage in the third season and I believe that the third season can be just as great as the second season when I take a critical look at Luke Cage's second season it is a masterpiece it is one of the best things that come out of the Marvel Cinematic Universe and I personally believe it is the best thing to come out of the Marvel Cinematic Universe because with Netflix's Luke Cage season 3 they did an amazing job on this season they elevated many of these characters who in the comics were just designed to be racial stereotypes into human types they did an amazing job as ter in terms of production they did an amazing job in terms of sets and design and cinematography and when I take a look at this series with overall there really need to be some serious considerations by the Academy for the Emmys as it relates to Luke Cage because this season was so good I really believe that this series should be nominated for Best Drama Simone Missick really needs an Emmy for Best Supporting Actress um, Alfred Woodard deserves an Emmy nomination and Mike Cotler deserves an Emmy nomination as well this how that's how solid this series was and it really took the whole comic book genre to another level and if we could get adaptations like this in the Marvel Cinematic Universe it would be in a lot better place I would love to see the standards of Netflix's Luke Cage brought to the Marvel Cinematic Universe because if they brought that type of quality to the, to the Marvel Cinematic Universe on their movie side they would be crafting masterpieces that would be winning Oscars almost every year if you'd like to see me make more videos like this you can donate to my patreon by clicking the link in the description box and if you want to try some of my SJS direct publications you may do so by clicking the link to amazon.com that's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe.